We're gonna show you some easy to do stretches you can use at home from a chair for low back and hip pain. Usually the hips, the gluteals, the lumbar spine, the low back, when people are having low back pain, they all seem to be interrelated. I'm gonna use Lucy as a model to give you some simple yoga and massage that you can combine to be able to work on yourself and help lumbar spine pain. To have you work on your low back, we're going to explore some range of motion through the hips. The first thing I'm going to do is, since Lucy is right-handed and you at home are probably more likely to be right-handed, I'm going to have her lift her right leg into what I call a figure four, which means she's crossing. And from here, I want to make sure that she doesn't feel any untoward pressure on her knee. And then using her hand, she can grab her knee and start to pull it over to lengthen down through the right side of the hips and the gluteal muscles. When I talk about the hips and gluteals, I'll use, sometimes use those words interchangeably because what you think of as your hip, as your side, those gluteal muscles attach at the greater trochanter of your femur. When you bring your knee towards your opposite shoulder, that means that you're lengthening primarily a muscle called piriformis. Piriformis is Latin for pear-shaped. When people are having pain that runs down the back of their leg, nine times out of 10, they're having what massage therapists would call piriformis syndrome. What you're doing is just lengthening or stretching that muscle as you're pulling the knee towards the opposite shoulder. You can make any small micro movements or adjustments that you want, which means if your shoulder is here, you might be able to pull at an angle that's a little further this way. You might be able to pull at an angle that's a little bit further this way. It depends on where you, Lucy, feel tension in your hip and on this right side. How's that? Good. If Lucy decides to, just like you at home, she can also add in a little bit of upper back and neck. She can actually pull her chin and forehead down towards the knee. Just to give her a little bit of length here, uh, more full body involvement, even though the hip and the low back is the primary thing that we're working on. When she brings her head back to neutral, we're then gonna have her arms come to relax. We're gonna let her knee fall open. Make sure again that she feels comfortable through here. No tension there at all, okay. Slowly what I'm gonna have her do is I'm gonna have her take a big in breath, just like you at home. You're gonna lengthen your spine. You're gonna bring your back off of the chair. As she leans forward a little bit, do you start to feel that into your hip and lumbar spine? She can go as far forward as she would like. If she finds that it's too much pressure, she can put her hands down to be able to lift her torso to stay at the position that she wants. Since we're primarily working on the right side, lumbar, hip, low back junction, she can go in as far as she would like as long as it feels comfortable to her. You can feel intensity. I don't want you to feel pain. As she's slowly leaning in, she may be able to stack her forearms in a way that allows her to just hang out here. You'll see that she naturally and instinctively added in this neck stretch because I think she wanted that. But the primary stretch again is around the sacrum, the lumbar spine, and the hip junction. Many people are holding tension in their hips. We have very shallow, kind of limited range of motion through our hips. Most of what people do is sit in a chair, lay down. They don't do a huge amount of exercise. So they're not getting a lot of range of motion out of the hips generally. As Lucy brings her body back up, we're gonna see how that feels. Now, how does it feel through your low back in this hip area? Good? Okay. Did you just want to switch sides? And again, she's going to go slow as she's exploring this left side now. 
She probably had a little bit more tension on the right, but I also wanted to make sure that she's not using too much pressure. Sometimes you're gonna feel differences from side to side, slight asymmetries. In yoga practice, you're gonna work on those slowly. What that means is if your right side, your right hip, your right gluteal, gluteal is inordinately tight compared to the left side, you might stretch the right twice and stretch the left once just to try to balance out the sides. She's going through the simple steps that we followed before. She made sure that the knee was safe. She was pulling the knee towards the opposite shoulder. Now she's leaning forward and trying to create space. Because Lucy has a little bit more tension in her upper back and neck, she has that natural tendency to want to lengthen through there as well as she's working on muscles around the sacrum, muscles around the hip, the gluteals that cross at the junction between what I think of as the hip and the low back, the gluteal muscles and deep through the pelvic bowl. She can slowly prop herself in any position that feels comfortable. In this case, I might give her an additional option. Instead of propping yourself, what happens if you reach your arms down? Is it still comfortable there? Lucy is a little bit more pliable, maybe a little bit more flexible, probably even than I am. Women have a tendency to be a little bit more uh, stretchy than men, but we're just gonna invite her comfortably to her edge. I gave her that option because I think that's comfortable and safe for her. She's also getting a little bit more length through her upper back here, which I know is a challenging area for her. But our primary focus, again, is on the muscles in the hip and the gluteals. You have gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and then your deep lateral rotators, piriformis, gemella superior, obturator internus, a bunch of muscles deep in the pelvic bowl that come around and attach on the greater trochanter of the femur. By lengthening through here, she's being able to decrease her uh, tenacity, decrease the potential for having low back pain. I'm gonna slowly have her come back up to center, just to see what the difference feels like from the left side to the right side. She can go ahead and uncross. How does it feel? Good. Do you feel more tension still on the right side? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have her cross legs this time, but instead of a figure four, what I want you to do at home is, you're gonna bring the left leg just a little bit more to center. You're gonna cross the right leg over at the thigh. There you go. Now, if this feels really tight to you, you can always leave this out. I just wanted to give this as an additional option. Um, as you're doing this, you don't have to be completely wrapped. Some people's hips would be open enough that they could start to tuck the foot behind this leg. Um, I don't even think I could do that easily. As you can see, for her, it's fairly easy. When she puts her hips in this position, I want her to lean forward again. This is just changing the position of the femur in the hip to be able to access some of what's in the low back and the gluteals there. Do you prefer the other version or this one, Lucy? Uh, this one feels good right now. For right now, this feels good to her. I'm just helping her explore range of motion. If you do anything at all that feels painful, back off. Intensity gets your intent attention. I want your attention. I want your meditative focus as you breathe in this position to give you some stretch. I don't want you to push yourself so that you feel pain, discomfort. When you feel pain, you have a tendency to tighten muscles, to recoil, because you don't want to injure yourself. We don't want you to hurt yourself. You want it to be intense. That's where the good stuff lives. Now slowly from here, what I think she can do is, she's leaning forward. With her upper body, she can essentially turn in any way that she wants, left to right, to be able to try to give it some nuance. I'm trying to get her to feel, not just through her upper back and neck, but also deep down, uh, QL, quadratus lumborum, uh, these muscles along the lumbar paraspinals because she's leaning that far forward. She's giving nuance and she decided on her own to stretch towards the left side. 
My immediate guess is because she's having more tension down through her QL on her right side. Again, quadratus lumborum. Yeah, Latin again. Lumbar, lumborum, quadratus, meaning quad, four, four points of a contact. Right through the lumbar spine. She's leaning over to the left, creating more space on the right side. I'm using a little bit of finger pressure just to make her more aware of that area right there. And then slowly as she's ready, she can lift her body up just like you are at home. She can uncross the legs back to neutral. And then after shaking it out, maybe re-stabilizing the hips, coming to neutral, she can go ahead and switch sides again and see what the difference is from the right to the left. She crosses, really open uh, hips that allow her to do that. I, I could not do that. That would be something I would have to stretch and practice and build up to to cross that way. Then slowly she's gonna lean forward. It'll be a little tighter at first because we haven't worked this side quite as much as the right. Slowly, as she works through that, she's going to breathe just like you are at home. Once we've gotten the stretch, that's where the breath really starts to take over. The more you get lost in the stretch because of the breathing, I think the more effective it is in getting you to relax and unwind. Breathing in yoga tends to affect the sympathetic nervous system by getting somebody to rest and relax and calm down, which means it stimulates the parasympathetic, which is rest and rejuvenation. People feel calm, more alert, more mentally clear after yoga classes, and we're reducing the noise in your nervous system by removing stiffness and pain. This time she's leaning just a little bit more to the right side, I think lengthening again right through the left side of the QL. You have one on either side of the spine, giving her a little bit of pressure in there just to bring her awareness to the area. And as she is ready, she can slowly bring her body back up. She can uncross, bringing her legs back to neutral, just to see how that feels. Pretty good? Yeah. Okay. This time I'm gonna invite her, if she can scoot on her seat forward in the chair, I want her to lengthen both legs out on the floor and slowly what she's going to do is she's going to take a big in breath and lengthen her spine as she exhales she's going to lean forward and i want her to put a little bit more length on her hamstrings at the backs of the legs and also through the lumbar spine down here using your arms you can bring yourself to a comfortable stretch you don't have to push you don't have to be aggressive you're just creating a little bit of length. The hamstrings and the muscles in the legs are gonna influence pelvic positioning. This gives her a chance to lengthen that. If you wanna focus on the hamstrings a bit more, you lengthen the legs, straighten the legs, lift the kneecaps. It really depends on you and what you feel. When she has her knees bent, that's not wrong. When also I have you scoot forward in the chair, I wanna make sure you have enough balance here to not fall out. You want it to feel comfortable and secure as you're leaning forward. Lucy, where do you feel that primarily? Back of the hamstrings, yeah. A lot of people are having tightness there. We don't spend a lot of time uh, lengthening, I think, the hamstrings, working around the hips. The hamstrings insert on the ischial tuberosities, what people think of as their butt bones. When the hamstrings are really tight, it has a tendency to change some of the posture that starts around your sacrum and your lumbar spine. So being able to lengthen that and open the hips is something that feels really nice for people. If you, for some reason, forward bend this way and you don't like it, you feel like it exacerbates low back pain, 
you may be in a position where you want to back bend. And in just a minute, I'm gonna show you an additional option where you can take your spine the opposite direction. Everyone will be a little bit different, but I tend to focus on forward bending as it seems to help most people that I interact with as clients. Slowly, you can walk your hands up, bring yourself back up to center. How's that there? Good. Now, when you sit back up, you don't feel the tension on your hamstrings. Does it feel like your low back feels a little more, yeah. little more open? Yeah. I'm gonna have Lucy take her fists. She's gonna walk her fists down into her low back, and I wanna see if she can get her elbows or arms to rest on the back of the chair. There we go. Now, I'm gonna support here, so she's got a little bit of support. How's that where the fists are right there? Is that too much on your elbows? No. Okay. Can you arch and just back bend a little bit with that pressure there? There you go. She's going to comfortably lean her head and neck back. I'm here to support the chair just in case. If, she, if you're at home and you don't have someone at the back of the chair, you can just back the chair up against the wall. I just wanted to be able to give her some touch where she can press on either side of the lumbar spine around where the QL was just above the iliac crest that's the the top of the hip back here you're just above that and able to use your fist to gently press into that muscle how's it feel good, good. now from there you can make small changes you can move shoulder blades you can move the head and neck you can take the head and neck out if you want um, in this case lucy what happens if you take the head and neck alone can you just bring the chin forward so you can keep this where it's at, but then bring the head forward like that. How's that feel? Do you feel like you get some length in there? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're taking the spine essentially in two different directions at the same time. The lumbar spine is back bending. The upper spine, the cervical spine, is forward bending. She's doing this in a way she doesn't have a lot of pressure. She's doing this in a way that feels comfortable to her. Also, if anything, feels off. If for some reason it just doesn't feel right, you could leave the neck component out or you could decide to change positions. Lucy can continue to press into the lumbar spine if she chooses. She can also bring herself back to neutral, taking the hands out just so she can see how she feels generally through her back, including upper back and neck, but mainly down through the lumbar spine and sacrum just to see how that feels. In this case, I think to give her one additional piece, I'm gonna have her sit to the back of the chair again. There we go. Now, can you bring your legs out and then your feet in together? I wanna to see the length of this chair here, if you have no space there. Can you grab your feet? There you go. I, was, I wasn't sure if she was gonna have enough chair space. Is that too much on your hips? Um, no. No? Okay. So from right there, what we're adding in is a piece for her adductors, the adductors of the hip. You have abductors there on the outside. They abduct you, take you away like the aliens. The adductors are on the inside. Many people have tight adductors as well. When your feet are in this position comfortably, if you can't do this in a chair, you could also do this uh, seated on a floor. But I think this is a nice option. As she's this way, I'm slowly again going to invite her to roll forward and forward bend but only to a comfortable level for her. I don't want her to feel discomfort in her knees or her hips, but she's able to create a little bit of length through the adductors and then also through the lower back down here. What do you feel, Lucy? On the left side? Yeah. There you go. So now that she's rolling forward, she's giving me a little feedback about this side on the left, feeling a little bit more tension there. You can move side to side to pick which direction you want to go. I'm not telling you exactly what muscles to stretch. There's a lot of complexity that comes from focusing on different areas of the body. Primarily what I want you to do is feel. That feeling process isn't quite as rational. It's feeling where Lucy feels tension and where she'd like to try to release it. 
To give her an additional piece, we're gonna bring her spine back to center. She's kind of holding the feet. What happens if you butterfly the hips, the legs up and down like butterfly wings? Do you still feel more tightness on this side? Um, no, actually, it feels more even. Dissipated, okay. Being able to mobilize the hips that way just opens up the hip joint. She can again allow her legs to fall down comfortably and then slowly roll forward. If she wants to add in the upper back and neck to this, she can. She's getting this nice length on the paraspinal muscles. She's got a little bit more length in the adductors of the hip. It's just giving her some nuance. She's choosing to go side to side. She went to the right, then the left. What feels good to you? That is really what I want you to do because I'm trying to get you to embody for yourself. As a teacher, I'm just trying to help students through their own process. A lot of times yoga teachers make jokes because we spend time telling people to drink water and to breathe. Very simple things that most people know how to do, but it's increasing nuance to give her some length in through her hips and more awareness of what's going on in her lumbar spine. What will happen for someone like Lucy is she will pick the stretches that she likes the most and hopefully she will incorporate them into her daily life so that she feels comfortable and calm even between yoga classes. Allowing students and clients to uh, embody really empowers them to work on themselves. Go ahead and bring yourself up. Now, if you lean back into the chair, can you grab around the feet? Can you almost lift? Can you get a grip to almost lift the legs up just a little bit? And I've got the chair here as you lean back. How does that feel? Where do you feel that primarily? Still in there? Okay. So what she's done is she's lengthening her arms. She's sort of pulling on the ankles just a bit. It's probably opening through the hips, but she feels like she has more support for her spine. We're just giving her small changes in movement, awareness, positioning to help her lengthen and stretch in her own body. Slowly she can let go and bring her legs back to neutral again. Are there any of those that you want to repeat? No? A lot of people will go back to the figure four, maybe on one side. If you find that you have more tension on the right side, feel free to go ahead and do a second time on that side, a second set of repetitions. Again, if you feel more tension on one side, you can do that side twice. When you find stretches that you like from the series, feel free to take one or two and go ahead and just add them into your daily routine sitting in a chair. These are very easy to do even when you're sitting at the office. Don't feel like you have to go through a full sequence every time. I really want you to sample bits and pieces that you can use in your day-to-day -day life that are gonna improve range of motion, decrease stiffness, and help you with back pain. Thank you so much for joining us today. We also have a video very similar for the upper back and neck that you can watch. You can find the link to our full yoga massage course on the links just down below. In my 15 years experience as a yoga teacher and massage therapist, I've blended techniques to be able to help students consistently with flexibility, mobility and by helping them decrease pain in their bodies. As I work with those students to embody, I'm sharing those same techniques with you in this yoga massage course to help you connect with students, increase rapport, and help students just like I have. You're going to be able to, in following the series, work on yourself help the students work on themselves so that they can embody and you can be a rock star teacher for helping students feel comfortable being their own best educator.